everyone and welcome to another newscast. My name is Sam Healy and in this video we're going to tell you all of the latest news about our projects as well as the company. As always, if you don't want to watch the entire video, you can skip to the parts that interest you by utilizing the timestamps in the description below. This week we don't have any further information on Steam Watchers or Hell the Last Saga, but let's get to everything else. For Joan of Arc today, we wanted to mention that the Pledge Manager is going to close on Wednesday, February 17th, as we will soon be going to production. This is your final chance to complete your pledges and make sure you have your correct shipping address entered. We still plan to share with you the Teutonic Knights booklet. It's currently being proofread internally, and we will share with you the final document when it's ready. So please bear with us on that. Even after we share it with you, though, we will still have some time to implement possible feedbacks and suggestions you all send in. For Solomon Kane today, we are no longer accepting address changes, but your hubs will be sending out address verification emails as long as you're not in the Asia, New Zealand, or Australian shipping regions. And you can still change your delivery address by responding to those emails from the hub. So make sure you do so quickly upon receipts of those communications. Now, Solomon Kane has arrived at the ports for Meeple Logistics, Spiral Galaxy, and Quartermaster Logistics, and shipping will begin in the coming weeks. On our YouTube channel tomorrow, we will share with you the first part of the video with Leo playing the right hand of Doom, so make sure you stop by and check that out. The playthrough is completed in three parts, so make sure you look out for all the videos in succession. If you don't want to be too spoiled, then you can watch the first episode only. We will have the videos in both languages, English and French, and the playthrough went quite differently in the two different sessions. For Reichbusters today, the Errata Pack will be on the boats to go to the hubs on February 25th. As per usual, they will make their way to the different hubs from which we will arrange shipping free of charge to all backers. Thank you so much for your support and patience. For Enchanters today, we just wanted to give an update for those of you with special orders that are still missing copies of Odyssey, Novice, Pledges, and East Quest, etc. Our smaller factory in Germany has confirmed that they will be done at the beginning of March. Unfortunately, this news didn't come with an update for our Polish copies, but please rest assured that we are in close contact with our factories, and when we're given an update, we will make sure to share it with you. For Super Fantasy Brawl today, the Force of Nature expansion will ship from China February 25th. This is the date we've been given by the factory, and if there's anything that changes, we will of course let you know. By the end of the month, we will have the Feldher bag available in our eShop too, so be on the lookout for that. Errata cards in French are leaving via Hong Kong Post. The official date of their arrival will be coming soon. Also, keep your eyes peeled for something cool on our social media outlets this week. You'll probably enjoy it. Hello, Torchbearers! Today for Darkest Dungeon, the board game, we will visit the Old Miller's Farm to learn more about The Color of Madness, the last expansion that was revealed during our Kickstarter campaign, and the only one with a bit of a twist. It's a standalone expansion, and what we mean by that is that this expansion is not added into the main campaign of the game, but instead is an alternate way to play the game. The components, monsters, bosses, etc. of this expansion cannot be used in the campaign, but you will need, of course, some components from the base game, like your heroes, tokens, and boards, etc., in order to be able to play it. The Color of Madness is for those players who want to have a second, more traditional way to play Darkest Dungeon, the board game, outside of the campaign. In other words, it's a self-contained game that you can enjoy in a single session. Of course, in order for the game to work properly like that, there are various changes. The first of those changes is that you no longer have the Hamlet dungeon loop like you have in the campaign mode of the game. Instead, the whole game is played on the farmstead board. Now, that also means that there is no longer an exploration and a combat phase because everything is happening at the same time on this single board. 
The heroes will have to face hordes of enemies while at the same time they can explore, loot, and level up in the various different areas of the farmstead. Another key difference is the way light works in the expansion. Instead of having a light meter that goes up and down, the light in this strange place just changes colors, which trigger different effects. Every time the light raises, heroes will choose the color that the light will take, thus triggering an effect of their choice. But every time the light drops, it will take the default farmstead color instead, raising the stress of each hero by two. And last but not least, the goal of the game is also different. In this mode, you have to reach the final boss and defeat it in order to win. And just with that, it sounds kind of the same as the campaign, we know, but in order to do so, you need to meet one of two conditions. One, you face and defeat every single monster the game throws at you. Or, two, you destroy the sleeper's dream, a mysterious, hateful shard of alien origin that is probably the cause of what's going on at the Miller's farm. Who knows? When the heroes accomplish one of those two things, they will be instantly teleported to a campfire, at which they will have some time to catch their breath before they face one of the three bosses that come with this expansion and have a chance to win the game. And this concludes our general overview of the Color of Madness expansion. We certainly hope you enjoyed it. So until we meet again, try to keep your stress low and your spirits high. Hey everyone, I am back. And today we're going to talk about two games that I've been playing recently and one game that I just purchased recently that I'm really looking forward to playing here in the next week or so. Maybe I'll even report back to you next week to uh, let you know what I thought about it. Uh, but first of all, the two games that I've been playing this week, first of all, I was able to get another game in of this classic, Carcassonne. Now, I played the newer version of it, not this one. This is one that I've had for quite some time, and it has seen a lot of usage. Uh, but basically, this is a tile-laying game, probably, I'm not going to say one of the original, but it's definitely... It's a it's an older game. Uh, as you can see there, it says that it was Spiel des Jahres winner in 2001. Uh, but this is kind of all that is encompassed in that game. You're literally taking tiles and building the board as you go along. You can't place them diagonally. They have to be orthogonally placed somewhere so that their features match on the edge where it's touching. Uh, and you can score points for a number of different things. You can score points for having farmers and fields. You can score points for having guys that are in uh, the cities. You can score points for people who are on roads. There's a number of different things that you can do there. But it's a really fun game. And uh, it's one of those games that, while very simple, it's stuck around. It has a lot of staying power because it's just one of those familiar games that you know how to play. It doesn't have a whole lot of rules to it at all. Uh, but it just sticks around and it's it's one of those evergreen type of games that just seems to work wherever you uh, get it to the table or whenever you get it to the table. Now, there's a lot of different ways that you can play this. They have an Around the World series, which is one of my favorite ways to play the game uh, because it takes, you know, different parts of the world and, and applies that theme to the mechanisms of the game, switches up and adds a couple of, of mechanisms here and there. But those are really cool to play. Uh, they have a snow version of the board of the game out now where all the tiles have a very snowy appeal to them or appearance. So there's just a lot of really cool things. A lot of this stuff is still available. Probably not everything. There's been a, a ton of expansions for this thing. Some of them are really small single tile or single mechanism components. Uh, additions to it, but um, there's a lot of stuff still available for it, so I'd encourage you to go check it out. It's very fun, and it's been one of my evergreens in my collection. Another game that I played this weekend I don't actually own, but it's called Century Spice Road. Now, there's a Gollum edition out there that I like a lot more, just based on the components of that version, based uh, or as compared to the components of this version that I'm showing you. Uh, but I really do enjoy the game in general. It has a really cool uh, uh, caravan, spice caravan, uh, spice road theme that's wrapped around some pretty simple mechanisms um, and it's really kind of a vanilla-ish kind of game but it's really great on the gateway aspect of it and it looks great 
The components right out of the box are super good. Um, these little bowls are actually sit inside the, the box insert and hold uh, all of the cube components that represent the different spices you'll be trading and using throughout the course of the game. Just a lot of fun. Basically, you're trying to build an engine where you're going to take uh, spices or cubes. You can only hold 10 cubes at a time. And you're going to be using them, selling them, trading them to purchase different orders, I guess you could call them, uh, that are on the uh, tableau that everybody can purchase out of at any time. And each order has a certain number of points that's attributed to it. Once one person has completed five orders, the game will immediately end. And then whoever has the most points at the end of that is the winner. It's a really simple game, but it's a really beautiful production, first of all, in all aspects of production. The, the box insert is good, the components are good, uh, the card quality is good, uh, and the rules literally are on one sheet of paper, front and back, I think. So there's two pages of rules, but it's a really simple game. You can pick it up and get going in, in probably 15, 20 minutes, easy, even if you haven't read the game yet, uh, the rules yet. So now, C Century Spice Road does have um, a little bit of a, a set apart in that it's part of a, a three game series. It's the first one. But just by itself, Century Spice Road is a really fun game and it's, it is great for gateway experiences. So uh, go check that out as well. Now the one that I'm really looking forward to is kind of spoiled by my shirt. Uh, I was able to go to a buddy's shop over in uh, Spokane this weekend and pick up Top Gun the strategy game. Now I've not heard a whole lot either good or bad about this game. I've just heard that it is definitely nostalgic, which is the reason that I bought it. So I'm happy without even playing it yet. Just having this on my shelf, I will be happy because it has the Top Gun logo on it and it's a board game um, that represents one of my favorite movies of all time. So uh, I haven't even read the rules yet. I've punched it out. I've got it, gotten it ready to play, but I haven't even read the rules yet. So I don't know anything about it. I just know that there are uh, there's a fighter school pay phase, and then there is a volleyball game phase, which if you've seen the movie, of course, there had to be a volleyball game in there somewhere. So like I said, I haven't played it yet. I'm looking forward to playing it. I'm really excited to have been able to pick it up. And thanks to Mike Rasmussen at B-Side Games in Spokane uh, for doing that. I really appreciate uh, his service to the community and his service to veterans in his community as well. So go ahead. If you're in Spokane, just driving through, or if you live there, please go by and check out Mike's shop, B-Side Games. It's a great little niche shop, but uh, he and his buds do a really good job taking care of you when you're in there. So go check them out. But anyway, I think I've probably uh, taken too much time here. I better get back before you know who notices. Bye. Now remember that Leo will be live tomorrow at 6 p.m. GMT, 1 p.m. Eastern Time on our YouTube channel with a live Q&A in English and at 8.30 p.m. Paris time with a live Q&A in French. So tune in if you have any questions or just to see what he might spoil. But that's it for this week. Stay home, stay safe, and play some games while you're at it. And we'll see you on the flip side. Take care.